Okay, so a uh, super basic fucking rant right now because um, I'm super fucking pissed off. Last time I did this, it turned out valuable. And uh, my guys, John Massive Video especially, has been really pushing me hard to do another one, like Angry Rant. So is Hunter Garth. Um, and I've been avoiding it, but I just got ticked off like two seconds ago and thinking about something that I might, I might express through this video. I might uh, try to hide it. I don't know. But um, it comes down to something that I have, that has guided my life since I was fucking 16. And that I didn't, I wasn't even aware of how powerful it was until uh, very lately when I've been listening to, um, not podcasts, but reading books and watching YouTube videos on mindset. And, um, and the power of controlling your fucking mind, right? Uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but everyone in my life knows that I'm a miserable control freak. Um, like really bad. And now I'm trying to control my mind more um, because my mind has been my fucking worst enemy. My mind is what has stopped me from doing so many things, but my mind is also what has allowed me to do um, many, many things. So um, the more control I can have over my own thoughts and emotions, the, the more able I will be to make the visions that live in my head become reality. And part of what this whole thing sparked was um, was the fact that the more I talk to people, the more I realize uh, how rare it is for somebody to have a vision of their own life, okay? And when I, th considering how I've lived my life this way for this many years, 16, you know, I'm at the very, very ripe age of, um, of 30 right now. So 14 years I've been living with a vision in my mind of the future. And it never leaves, because I'm, I'm a daydreamer. I just had this epiphany with John Forsyth. Uh, he's one of our guys, one of my besties. Um, I think the reason I'm in film, actually I know it, is because when I was younger, I was very, I was shy, insecure, I was very timid, I was bullied, uh, all the way up until the rock bottom accumulating in thoughts of suicide. And during that time of my life, my dreams, that which lived in my head was way better than reality. Because reality sucked because I was always scared. And I, I, knew, I, I never had the courage to do anything I wanted to do because I was scared of it. And so it was easier to just live in my head and just daydream about all of the things that I wish that I did and uh, the ways that I wish I was. And uh, that's when I, that, that was when I started visualizing was actually during that time of my life, right? So I'm trying to hang out with these guys who are all hanging out and the fucking, all the cool kids, right? And I'm going to hang out with them and they don't want to hang out with me because I'm a fucking dork. I'm a tool. I, I, don't, I don't make their image good, right? So they don't want to hang out with me. And feeling that, every, that pain every day made me go live in my own mind and visualize about what it would be if they did like me they did accept me. But then it changed. And then it changed to, you know what? I would rather, it would be really cool if I was the guy that everyone was trying to hang out with. And I was the guy that could make people feel good, like some of the, the guys that I looked up to. There was a bunch of assholes and there was one guy that I looked up to, Tim O'Hara. And I'm like, you know what? If he has this unbelievable ability to make me feel good just by talking to me, I want that ability. I want that fucking superpower. And I want to share that with others, right? And I dreamt of this while I'm the shy little kid walking by the group, like wondering if I should go in and like try and step into the circle. Uh, but yet, I, most of the time I would not. And if I did try to step into the circle, some guys would like block me out. Some guys would throw shit at me, just crumple up their, their cookie, uh, Thing that we think we buy cookies at school and churros and shit and come it up, throw it at my face. <laughs> Fuck out of here, Mar. Um, and I'd be like, <laughs> whatever, dude. Fuck you, dude. And I'd play it off like it didn't hurt, but it was I was crying inside, miserably. And then I 
casually walk away when I didn't think they'd notice, when I didn't think they sensed, could tell my shame. And then I would go walk away and just visualize what I wished I could have done to that guy's face. And how badly I wanted to hurt him physically. Um, and how I, how, how I wished I handled the situation. What I, how I handled that situation and what they would all think of me when I walked away from it. I would just dream of that. And then finally those dreams accumulated into reality one day, which I'll save that for another story, but it was this fucking magnificent fight at the Lucido Park with me and Tony Boyle, and I fucking beat his ass in front of all his friends in a gangster-ass way. Um, and then my life started changing after that because I realized that everything that I did in that moment was something I had dreamed. And I realized I have the power to make what lives in here happen in real life. So I've been living the rest of my life like that. I've, I've, I have lived the rest of my life like that. I have a fucking vision of what I want to happen. A vision of who I want to be. A vision of the way I want the people around me to interact with each other. Okay, it's like, it's very fucking specific. I know exactly what kind of environment I enjoy being in. And you know what it is? It's the same environment that I grew up in with my family. Big fucking Irish Catholic family in New York, all from Queens Village. The way we interacted with each other, the energy and the love in that environment, that's what I want everywhere I fucking go. And I mold and, and craft and shape until I, I get that. That's why ever since I've been throwing parties for my friends since I was 17, I have the best parties. Not because I've got any more booze and, than another party or because there's really cool decorations, but because I have the best fucking people there. Because the people create the energy. The energy guides the culture. Um, there's other things that guide the culture that I'll get, get into at a different time, but it starts with the people, having good fucking people there. One fucking rotten egg, and it's like the energy's off. And it can, it can still be fine, but it's like, it's noticeable. And so that's why bringing great people together is, is what has allowed my life to get to this point. Because I had a vision, and that vision was what I already saw. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna recreate that. So I need to bring these kinds of people together. Everyone's gotta have a sense of humor. Everyone's gotta have this similar sense of humor or it's not gonna work. Or some people are gonna be really fucking offended and some turn out, no, it's like everyone's gotta be on the same playing field. And they've gotta understand that there's love behind everything. Love and good intention, uh, good intentions for everyone around them, right? If everyone comes into the group with that, it's gonna fucking happen, okay? It's, and it happens because it was visualized. It doesn't just happen, okay? There are plenty of things that are coincidental, um, but then the majority of things happen because somebody wanted it to happen. That's the way I choose to live my life, and I think it's a pretty fucking good way to live life. To just live life like, oh yeah, God's gonna let me know what happens next. I'm still, he hasn't responded to my email in a couple minutes, but, uh, or years, but uh, I'm pretty sure God's gonna respond. He's gonna tell me what my path is. God's gonna tell me what fucking staircase to walk up. God's gonna tell me how fast. I'm just gonna go where the wind blows me. No. <laughs> I was gonna say something really fucking obnoxious. Uh, you don't go where the wind blows you unless that's what you want out of life. If that's an enjoyable life for you, then fine, go fucking do it. But most people <laughs> know what they want out of life, but they just haven't taken the time to visualize it, to sit and think, what do I want my funeral to look like? Who do I want to be there? What do I want them to say about me? What do I want them to think about me? Right? Start there and then back plan. Right? You start walking back. Oh, I'm not giving him any fucking free ads. Hell no. Motherfucker's got enough. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is this is a great bed TV sketch. This is great. Oh, I love this one. It's called Dummy LT. Um, okay, so. Uh, oh, this is from me and my own barracks, by the way. So, uh, I, I see all these people fucking complaining. That's honestly, that's what pisses me off because I hate complaining. Bitching, moaning, complaining. It's so fucking weak and pathetic. I 
fucking hate that. Are you fucking Marines sitting around just bitching? Shut up. God, that is fucking disgusting. You guys think you're so much better than civilians, but meanwhile, there are civilians out there who are doing 18 hours of work a fucking day, never bitching. Never. Like sitting at a computer, just fucking typing code. Elon Musk and his bro were like type, working like 20 hours a day, just this. Drinking soft drinks, typing code for 18 hours, 18, 20 hours a day. They'd sleep in the fucking office and wake up and just keep going. No one told them to do that. They didn't, bitch, they didn't have anyone to bitch to. Now look what happens. His visions of the world are becoming reality. That was a tangent. Just stop bitching. It's fucking so disgusting. <laughs> fucking weak. Just go home. Like if you're going to join the Marine Corps, bitch, go home. Why'd you join? You knew exactly what you were getting into. There's enough fucking YouTube videos to let you know exactly what you're walking into. Okay, I got to get watch vet TV. You'll know exactly what you're getting into. And then once you get into the military, now there's no excuse anymore. You can't bitch. So just shut up. Shut up. God, I felt so good. All right. So next, uh, let's go back, back to the vision, right? That's what this whole fucking thing is about. It's about having a vision and then working towards the vision. All right. So what do you want your fucking funeral to look like? Right? What do you want people to say about you? Do they want them to say that you're a fucking asshole? Do they want, do you want your family to be like, oh, that guy fucking cheated on every fucking girlfriend or wife you ever have. Oh, that guy was never there for his kids. Right? Do you want them to say that? No? Okay. Well then work to figure out what you want to say and then fucking do that. Start there. And then back plan. Okay. What do I want to do? The last fucking, say I'm going to live to 80. The last fucking 10 years, what am I going to do? 10 years before that, 60 to 70, what am I going to do? 50 to 60. Build it out. All right. If I'm going to have this many fucking kids, then I'm going to be this, this many years working, this many years retired, this many years going to my kids' fucking softball games and fucking my grandkids' games and shit, right? All of that. Plan it! Because you can make it fucking happen. And if you're sterile, uh, which I, I wonder if, if I might be, considering all the lovely, lovely, magnificent vaginas I've blown in and haven't had a fucking pregnancy once, um, I'm wondering, but even if I don't, fucking, if, if I am, I'll, I'll adopt and I'll fucking make the vision happen. Um, so, how about let's just start with visualizing the next day of your life, right? Like, what do you want to happen tomorrow? What time do you want to wake up? What is the first thing that you're going to do? The second thing that you're going to do? When are you going to get your food? When are you going to get your workout in? When are you going to start working on this thing that you know you have to do tomorrow? Just think about it and write it fucking down. I'm, I'm so frustrated with the level of patheticness. That, that exists in society in general, but fuck society. I'm, I'm focused on veteran community, right? The patheticness is so bad. I'm spitting all over the place right now because I can't fucking, I can't even handle it. It's so pathetic. Back when I was a fucking bullied little kid, I had this vision of, of what I wanted to do to bullies. And I visualized pummeling their fucking faces in mercilessly. I visualized cracking their fucking skulls, like on top of them, cracking their skulls until they started crying and begging for their mommy. That's what I visualized. And guess what? I did it dozens of times. Did it, oh, okay, that's a lie. It didn't all go down like that. But I cracked a lot of bullies' faces. I would like be at parties and shit and I'd just be like observant. And I'd see someone who sort of was looking like a bully and I would just kind of make my way over there I find some way of doing something. I would look at this guy and I would think about how I could do something to make him say something obnoxious to me. You know what it usually was? is something gay. Because <laughs> then he'd be like, hey, faggot. Right? And I knew, oh, that's all the justification I need to crack his fucking face open. And, uh, and then I'd go walk into a, a, a situation where I crack his face, elbow it, or knee it, or whatever. And I would visualize it first and I'd make it happen. But that vision started way back when I was being bullied, right? It started back then, man. This is what I, I want to be this fucking superhero that just beats bullies' asses. That's what I thought. As this young, as you know, 15 year old high school kid. Oh God, I just want to fucking beat all their asses, yeah. Right? I visualize that. And then when I see it, an opportunity to execute that vision, then I have a vision of how I'm going to make that happen right here and now. And I walk over to that motherfucker and I make that vision happen. I'm sorry, I don't do this anymore. This is what I used to, I did this 15 years ago. Uh, please don't get any fucking ideas from me because uh, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble and uh, I broke, I destroyed my body 
five shoulder surgeries, like 10, 12 broken bones in my hands, like don't do this. But nevertheless, the power of vision, right? Because that's what this is all about, the power of fucking vision. Uh, so, so what's next is uh, I visualized the kind of car I wanted to buy. It was a Cadillac Sedan DeVille four door, I wanted plush seats. I got the exact fucking car for the price that I wanted. And I envisioned how I would drive my car and what music I would play and the way my friends would sit in the back seat. We'd have three guys in the front, four people in the back and roll up to parties in my Cadillac. And that's exactly what happened. Fast forward, now I'm going to college. I decided to join a fraternity, which was not the vision, right? So it's, you, don't, you don't have to stick to the T, but I always said I would never fucking join a frat. I'll never pay for friends. Uh, well, then I see this frat, and I'm like, oh, these guys are cool as fuck. Oh, wow, there's a lot of girls here. Oh, they're playing sports? Cool, I'm joining. I'm joining, and I'm like, you know what? I don't like the leadership here. This is weak. I think I can do better. And I develop a vision of how I'm going to be the president of the fraternity. I envisioned what kind of president I would be like. How would I earn the presidency, right? Because you have to vote, right? Your bros vote for you. Well, how am I going to get them to fucking vote for me? I envisioned all the things that I would need to do. I would need to fucking start behaving a little bit better. I would need to probably step my game up a little bit in terms of just like not being such a disorganized just fuck off. And, uh, and I, would do, I would do all those things so that they would vote for me. And then when they voted for me, these are the kinds of changes that I want to make. This is my vision of what the fraternity would look like once I was the president and had the ability to control what happened in that fraternity. And that's exactly what I fucking did. I envisioned it all and I did it. Uh, did it happen to the T? No. Nothing, I don't know if everything, anything's ever to the T. Even that first fight I was in, that, I don't, that wasn't to the T. That was actually better than what I envisioned. Um, but sometimes vision isn't as good. But the vision provides focus. Focus of thought. Focus of effort. Focus of behavior. Focus of habit. It all fucking matters. But it starts with vision. Uh, so I envisioned what I'd be like in the fraternity. And that's what I did. And I was like, you know what? I've never had fucking had girlfriends, like chicks who were um, like a group of girls who were friends. Because um, I was always so scared of girls. And I'd be like, I want to own a group of girlfriends who were just cool, funny ass chicks. And that's what I got. And I'm still friends with some of them to this day. Sarah and Steph. I went to Stephanie's fucking wedding. We were friends in college. Hanging out at the frat house, at the sorority house, going to Denny's, going on weekend trips. And like now, you know, however many years later. Because my vision was I want lasting friendships. The vision can always become reality if you want it to. It can. Look at that. Look at what we're fucking at right here. That was a vision that lived in our heads. Uh, me and Chris Mandia wrote this thing. Okay? Chris Mandia and I. Excuse me. We wrote this fucking thing. We had a vision for this. And guess what? It hit the fucking screen. The vision hits the screen. That which lives in here. In this beautiful fucking organ, muscle, whatever. Has the ability to, to exist on the screen. That's why I'm in the, film. I'm in the entertainment business. Because I can't do anything else. There's nothing else for me. Sidetrack, but this is great thing of vision because Jack Murillo fucking nailed it. God, I love you, Jack. You're so fucking beautiful. Beautiful fuck. Start doing fucking more sex stuff because I gotta, I told you, dude, I gotta show you're a fucking sex machine. <laughs> Every, that's, that's all the show's about. It's just you dating. Jack, you know it'll be sick. Let's do it. Anyways, tangent. So, back to vision, all right? After college. Uh, I had a vision of um, when I decided I was going to be a personal trainer. My vision was really blurry for a time. Then it's like, you know what? I'm going to go for being a trainer because I don't like teaching. I was going to be a teacher. I'm like, no. Once I developed a vision, I tried to put together a vision for being a teacher. And I'm like, I can't find a vision that I enjoy. So I'm going I'm to be a personal trainer instead. And that was because, of, but that was because the only teaching options for someone coming out of college like me is you got to go for your year-long credential and then you... you, you Good chance you're going to work in the inner city. I don't want to do that. I couldn't, I couldn't handle those kids. I, I, I'd be mad at them. I, I, I yelled at them and shit when I was a substitute teacher in the, in the, in the hood. I, I, I'm not meant to, to do that job. But I'm going to empower others who do that job. So, anyways, uh, 
I'm like, no, I don't like the vision of being a teacher anymore, which that was the vision. Now it's blurry. Now I want to be a personal trainer. Okay, I can develop a vision for this because I've been personal training my friends for fucking years. Got this. I develop a vision for the kind of trainer that I'm going to be. Who are going to be my clients? How am I going to be with them? How are my clients going to perceive me? What will they think of me? What are my clients going to tell their friends about me when they leave my fucking session? I thought about all of this. And then guess what? It happened. All of the things that I thought about myself and my clients before I ever even fucking did the job came true. Maybe not all, but at least a lot of the things. Um, I wanted to be meaningful. I wanted to be an influential part of their lives. That was my vision. That came true for not all, but enough for me to talk about it here. <laughs> uh, and enough to give me a fucking a soapbox. Uh, so what's next? Then I have a vision for, I'm like, I watch this thing about fucking a documentary on surfing and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking learn how to surf. That was unbelievable. I started envisioning myself surfing. I go do it for a month. Never once did that vision become reality. Then one of my clients lends me a fucking longboard because uh, I was working on a really a six footer. Gives me a longboard, I'm up on the first time. And then we spend a whole day fucking in a competition and I fucking whoop her ass. Rebecca, you know I did. And you, you already owned it. I fucking killed the game. That vision of surfing, of zipping down the line, surfing properly, became reality. It was amazing. And Rebecca, thank you so much for the board. That got me started in surfing, really. Because um, I wasn't making it happen for myself. So, uh, next, I had this vision of, I saw this documentary of the Ironman Triathlon. This one guy was talking about how, I think he had, uh, he had some disease. I forget what it was. It just, just degenerated his whole body. Multiple sclerosis, I want to say. And he was like, yeah, I know I'm not going to have my legs anymore pretty soon, so I'm going to use them as much as I can. And he does a fucking Ironman, completes it. Like, I, I cried, and I'm like, I have to do an Ironman. Two days later, I'm signed up for an Ironman. I envision myself doing triathlons, doing these big fucking things. What will I be like when I'm in the middle of the race? What will I be like afterwards? And Did it all. Okay, next, Marine Corps. Had a vision of being a U.S. Marine when I was a little kid. I don't remember which one of the Vietnam uh, war movies it was, but I watched a bunch of Marines die and I was like, I gotta do that when I get older. Uh, something's wrong with me, obviously. So, um, I had this vision. Uh, what kind of Marine am I going to be? And I knew I was going to go officer. Um, I, and, and I'll get into why I, I knew I was gonna go officer at, at a different time. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very, very glad that I did because I was able to, to share my vision with my troops. Because I had a vision. What kind of officer am I gonna be? What kind of platoon commander am I gonna be in the infantry? What will my platoon sergeant think of me? What will my, my, my hardcore combat veteran Marines think of me? Like guys who've been to combat two, three times, like savage fucking pumps, to Fallujah and Ramadi and the invasion of Baghdad, right? What will they think of me? This is a brand new boot ass lieutenant. I already, I already knew how much he enlisted hated officers. I already knew all that. But I'm like, how am I going to be different? How will I create a vision that, uh, that these combat veterans can respect? That became my goal. Fuck, running out of battery. Okay, we're back. I wanted to earn the respect of, of real combat vets who worked under me. And I, didn't, I, I knew nobody respects... Um, Nobody gives you respect as a man. You have to earn that. And the respect for the rank, that's... For a lieutenant, there is no respect for the rank of lieutenant. There is none, because you're nothing. You are nothing and nobody. You've never led a platoon of Marines as a brand new lieutenant until right now. So you don't really even give respect to the rank. You know, the, the Marine term, you respect the rank, not the man. But there's nothing to respect about a lieutenant, especially a second. So, uh, so you have to earn it. For all you LTs out there, you future LTs, you have to earn that respect. And I thought, how would I earn it? And you know what it came down to? Just being the same fucking dude I've always been. Just be a good fucking person. There's no special sauce. There's no fucking uh, JJ did tie buckle uh, thing that's, that's going to make them respect you as a man. Um... Actually, that's a lie. JT did tie buckle. If you actually, if, if people actually did that, uh, you you would get respect because those are like really good fucking values. It's just it just sounds cheesy to like say that, but it, 
the less cheesy way, which is the, the direction I always try to go is, uh, just be a good dude. That's it. Don't be a fucking selfish piece of shit. Don't be an arrogant fuck. Don't be a narcissistic fuck. It's really hard nowadays. Uh, hello. Um, and then, uh, what else? Fucking, don't be selfish, I'm narcissistic. Just actually care. Care about them. Care about them as, as infantrymen going to war, which means train the fucking dog shit out of them. Like, break those motherfuckers down. Right? I, no, no more of this pussy shit. Uh, hard training with uh, fuck sleep, food, water, like hurt. You have to hurt if you're going to go to war, right? Um, and care about them as just Marines in general, like their careers. Maybe they want out of the infantry at some point. Maybe they want to lap move, whatever. You got to care. Care about them as human fucking beings, as people, as American citizens. Like, what are they going to do when they get out of the military? And how are the actions, the things that you are doing to them, going to affect them getting out of the military? You know? Like when your guys do little shit, like fucking drinking in the, in the rooms. And like, yeah, of course Marines are drinking in the rooms. Are you going to ruin his career for that? Does this guy actually have, do you see hope for him to do good things in the Marine Corps or out of the Marine Corps? Right? Think about all of these things and then make sure your actions reflect and don't fucking hammer a guy for stupid shit. Maybe you could, there's because there's another way to hammer someone other than the fucking NJP thing. Um, but I, I will say though, I, I would NJP uh, people for sleeping on post because uh, when you do that, you die. So, yeah. There's that. In, in, in combat, uh, beat their fucking ass. Um, in home though, you, you, you get in trouble if you beat their ass. So I'm not going to like, I'm not trying to be a bad influence here on all you active fucks. But bottom line is, like, for a lieutenant, have a vision for how you want to be perceived in the eyes of your men. Are they going to say, this guy's a fucking asshole? This guy f fucking, he's just such a prick. But then deep down, they're like, this guy knows his shit. If, if they say that about you, that, that's okay. But if they say, fuck him, he doesn't give a fuck about us. He doesn't care. If they say that, that means I, I think you're failing. I think your vision was weak or your execution of the vision was fucking weak because no one should ever say about you that you don't care. Epic failure. Uh, okay, so now I had this vision of how I would be with these guys, how I would earn their respect. I had this vision of what I would be like in combat. What would I be like under fire, right? Every guy wonders that. When I start hearing bullets and explosions and shit, how will I be? Will I freeze up and get scared like I used to when I was a kid? Will that happen? Or can I prove to myself that I can become the man that I want to be? That's what the Marine Corps was. That's what combat was for me. Can I continue to execute my vision of myself under fire? That's, that was my challenge to myself. For that, nothing else, no one else mattered. I needed to know that. Because I'm an arrogant fuck. And I continue to everything that I do. I'm like, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. But I'm like, but am I going to be awesome in combat? And am I going to be, am I going to be awesome under fire? Can I be that man I want to be under fire? Leading Marines in war. And I don't want to speak highly of myself, but um, I think I came close. I think I did okay. I think that uh, those who served with me would be like, yeah, he was, he was, he was legit. Uh, and if not, guys, feel free to call me out. Tell me when I was a piece of shit. I know I was a piece of shit sometimes. I know it. Uh, but under under fire, I think I was. I think I was alright. Um, now exiting the Marine Corps. A vision of my future. What am I going to do? Well, when I was 19, I had a vision of creating Happy Madison Productions. I wanted to create a production company that staffed my friends and family making comedies, laughing together for the rest of our lives. That was 19. I thought that I was going to do uh, 10 years in the Marine Corps, uh, nine, so four in the infantry, five in MARSOC, get out, be a teacher uh, for the next, uh, I don't know, however many years, and then eventually at some point start my production company. That was my plan. Uh, getting out of the Marine Corps, um, I'm like, you know what? 
I'm going to start writing now because I know that making my Happy Madison Productions happen is going to be through my writing. And I'm going to write the, mo the greatest book ever written. It's going to be a fucking bestseller. It's going to be a fucking hit. Um, and then I'm going to write another book and another book and another book. And then I'm going to save up the money. I'm going to make films and then more films. And then I'm going to have my production company making films at the rapid rate. Right? That was the plan. And I'm like, but you know what? I want to do more cool shit. I'm not done getting some. So I tried being a cop. Nobody would take me. Uh, psych test. I was too, too much of a risk taker. Uh, plus, I've got like metal in my body and shit. And so they were like, nah, we're good. I mean, even like you look at my body and you're like, that dude can fucking throw some hands. Um, but then you look at like the MRIs and you're like, oh man, this poor guy needs a new shoulder and ankles. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that failed. And I'm like, okay, that vision's gone. Fuck it, because I wanted to, I was going to continue to write under a pen name while I was a cop. So I only, I only wanted to be a cop like three years. And then I was going to fucking kank it and move on with, with Happy Madison. But that ended early. So I fucking write the book. Um, it wasn't the big fucking, wasn't the international bestseller that I had initially envisioned. However, I developed a new vision. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to, my first one, I'm not going to have this big international thing. I have no following. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. So instead, I'm just going to focus on those who I like to make laugh. My friends. All my friends in the infantry. I'm going to write a book that makes them laugh. And as I started to think about it more and more, I'm like, you know what? This is going to be become the, the favorite book of the infantry. Because grunts don't fucking read. Let's be real here. These stupid fucks. Fix that, guys. Come on. Fix that. Uh, but those who do read, I want my book to be their favorite. And uh, to some of them it is. I don't know, to all. But that, that vision was achieved to some degree. Um, and then I end up starting a nonprofit. Had no vision for that. Um, the Reverend Warriors was initially supposed to be like a, a dark duffel blog. Okay? But, uh, but then when the Silky Psych thing blew up, I'm like, nah, I'll... I'm, I need to start a nonprofit. I'm going to call it a Reverend Warriors because this works. It fits what this community is doing, and then went full speed with the nonprofit. And the vision there was never that clear because I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted it to be safer. I wanted the hikes to be safe, fun, well-planned. That's all I wanted, okay? So I started working towards that fucking, that vision. And that's going fucking great. Uh, psych, no it's not. That was a huge pain in my ass. Then I started making videos to sell my book, Vet TV. Now, selling my video. I'm, 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 I'm got my videos on YouTube. Dudes are like, God damn, I fucking pay for this shit. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, well, how can I fucking make, how can I make uh, a, a living making these videos? Because this is fun. I enjoy this. I'm obvious, I'm, I'm good enough to get, to guys tell me they pay for it. How do I make this into something fucking greater? To do my research, the answer was, I need a subscription service, and it's got to be for the whole veteran community, not just the grunts. And there needs to be something for everyone in the veteran community. So I start developing a vision. What could this be like? And you know what my vision was, was built on? MT motherfucking V. Why? Because MTV had a vision of creating a niche television network for a community of people that didn't have niche television. You know how that was? That was teens. Because back in the 70s, it was all for, it was cartoons or it was adult shit. MTV guys were like, they were already filthy, stupid rich. Like, bro, let's make something for fucking, uh, for the teen market, man. Like, it'd be so much fucking fun. These were just rich entrepreneurs who, like, wanted a project. And they started MTV in the early 80s. And look what happened. Everything that that brand, the way they marketed to their people was so brilliant. I'm like, that's what I want the foundation of our marketing to be. So it's similar to what MTV did. And then there's some of BET in there, right? Niche programming for a community. Then there was Black and Sexy TV. Niche progr programming for a community. And then I'm, now I've got the vision. And I'm like, oh my God. That's what this can be. And then the vision is getting bigger and even more clear. It's like we're getting an office. How do I want the energy in the office to be? So it starts off with, okay, which offices, because it's a huge spot, which office is going to be for which department, where... Which offices are dedicated to sets? What sets are they going to be? How are we going to facilitate movement of new people who are going to come in and film with us to make them feel comfortable and then send them into the set? Right? All of this stuff. 
envisioning, but most importantly, how are we going as a company going to make each other better? We're going to teach each other. Okay, what are we going to teach? What, what is the process by which we will teach each other? How often are we going to do so? Um, how will we create a culture of learning? Right? These are all visions that I'm just seeing in my head, and I'm going to put my effort and energy to making those visions reality. You know how I'm going to do it? By communicating those visions to the staff, to the team, to the collaborators. Because if they see the vision, they'll see some of it. They might not see my exact vision right off the bat, but they'll see something close, and then they'll say something that'll add to it, and then someone else will say something that adds to it, and I'll just be like, yeah, that's great. Yeah, good, let's do that, do that, do that. Fuck yeah, okay. Uh, who's in charge? You? Your deadline's next week. Let's move on and keep shaping the fucking vision. That's how shit gets done. It starts with the fucking vision, though. So now, what is the greater vision for veteran television? The greater vision is we've got one department that is making feature-length fucking films with budgets anywhere from 300000 to several million. All of those films are being licensed to distributors, whether they're Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple, uh, or Warner Brothers, Fox, you name it, okay? Uh, or we sell it ourselves because we've already got the fucking market. We already have our own distribution network, right? So either way, like, uh, those films are making a profit, every fucking one of them. Then we have the television division, which, we've, which is what we built the business on. We've, we make scripted television that recreates and parodies a military experience the way that you want to see it in the hopes that we can bring the community together and have a little bit less suicide. Like, that'd be cool, right? And it all starts with just entertainment that you guys want to see. And then, if we have a vision for what we want the military to be like, because the military is fucked up, or the veteran community to be like, the veteran community is getting weak as fuck. Maybe they're always been, I don't know. But if we have a vision for what we want it to look like and how we want it to be better, then we can insert little messages into our fucking, our television shows and our films. Those messages that get inside people's heads like Inception that will start shaping that vision of the community in the future, okay? Like just saying that, like I think bitching is so weak, I think that's a, that's a terrible culture um, in the military. It's just, it's, it's weak, it's pathetic, it's, it's just a weak-minded mentality, right? It's a weak-minded mindset. Um, just by saying that, some people are gonna hear that and be like, yeah, he's right. Bitching is fucking weak, it is stupid. Other guys are going to be like, fuck that. He's stupid. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He wasn't a listening ring. He doesn't know how much it sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get both. But some people are going to fucking agree. And that's going to shape their behavior. And if we can do that with all kinds of messages to our community, we're making the military community better, which then leads into them becoming better veterans because they don't suck as much. Right? You see how that works? You shape. You molding culture using good values. Identify what is the vision for the community and for the culture. What are the values needed by, to be embraced by everyone in order for culture to be shaped that way? And then how do we put those values into our films? The values of hard fucking work, of great discipline, of positive mindset, of love and respect and tolerance, right? All of those things, some of those things can't exist in the military. The military's got to have a different mindset, right? You're, you're, you're trying to defend the country against our, our enemies. Different ball game here. That is not civilian life. But when you get out, you got to unfuck your mind, right? There's a new, you have to adopt, develop a new mindset. You know, you got to adopt, then work towards the mindset, fix your mindset, and then go about the rest of your life with a better mindset. That's what you got to do when you get the fuck out, right? All of these messages we can put into our fucking films. You put them into entertainment. Why? Because entertainment guides culture. Always has, always will to the day we fucking die. Facebook is entertainment, Instagram entertainment, Twitter, fucking the news, Fox News. Oh my God, that's the weakest entertainment. The news, that is the weakest form of entertainment because it's, it's, it's so ungodly pathetic. Just, uh, step one, stop. Never watch the news again. Never. Don't even read it. If, it. if it's important enough, somebody will fucking tell you. Let some other loser watch the news and read the paper and then tell you the really important things while you're doing something else that you really fucking enjoy that actually improves your day, and then you could be like, oh wow, Syria got bombed again. Oh wow, that's crazy. Oh wow, Donald Trump said something crazy again. Oh wow, okay, thanks for telling me. Oh, Libya's in trouble. 
Big surprise. Explosion in Iraq. Big surprise. Explosion in Afghanistan. Whoa, no way. Who would have thought? <laughs> like, is it, is it really new? Oh, I, I don't even know the names of these politicians. This politician said this and he's got a probe. This politician is not getting probed. This politician is going to do that. Is it ever really groundbreaking news? No, it's not. So just stop watching it. <laughs> Instead, watch, watch the images that play in your own mind. Close your fucking stupid fucking eyes. I'm getting annoyed right now, so I'm going to have to turn this off. I'm, I'm, I'm losing patience with myself. This is get, getting weird. Close your fucking beady little eyes. That was a drill instructor line. And envision what you're going to do for the rest of the day today and the next day. And assign times to it. At 8 a.m. I'm doing this. 9 a.m. I'm doing this. At noon I'm doing this. Or, or actually, no, because most of you guys have 9 to 5s. Okay, so at work, I mean, you should try envisioning at work because if you actually did envision what you're doing at work, if possible, it might not be possible for some jobs, but you could, for some jobs, envision like this shit that you gotta do, make your day more productive so that you're getting all this work done in these times, and then on these hours, you're working on other shit that you actually wanna do while you're on the fucking job, right? So you're on the clock doing what you wanna do because you were more efficient with your time. Crazy fucking thought, right? So then let's say, okay, 5 p.m., you get off work, what are you doing? Okay, you're gonna drive 30 minutes to, uh, to come home, and then what? And then you're gonna, are you gonna check on your kids' homework? No, probably not, you're probably gonna go to the gym. So you're probably gonna go to the gym two hours later, Kids by that time have uh, done no homework, played video games, probably sat on their iPads, watched TV, probably fucking drew crayons all over the house, made a mess. You come home fucking pissed off. Uh, then you look at your wife and you're like, so you're like, okay, here we go. Here we go. You ready for this shit? I'm going to be really obnoxious. I'm fucking, I'm feeling fucking good right now. Here we go. So you, <laughs> you don't come home at five. Instead, you come home at fucking seven because you, you go to the gym and you, you talk on a bunch of buddies at the gym. Um... And then, uh, you know, you're flirting with this chick that, you know, you're not going to do anything, but she's just, it's just fucking cool just fucking talking to her because, I don't know, it just feels good. Uh, <laughs> and then you come home at seven, right? You come home at seven, your place is a fucking shithole, kids are fucking running around screaming, your fucking wife is in the kitchen making dinner, um, she's a little heavier than uh, she was when you married her, you were just talking to this really hot chick at the gym, so you're kind of in a fucking, you're just like, eh. And then she starts saying, hey, hey, you mind coming home a little bit earlier? And then you start getting mad. And you start saying something disrespectful. So around fucking 7.15, uh, start arguing with my wife. Uh, 7.30, tell the kids to shut up. Um, 8, uh, go back out to link up with a buddy because you're sick of fucking being at home. <laughs> and then uh, come home at 10. Uh, kids are already in bed, thank fucking God. Um, place has been cleaned up a little bit. Um, then you get into bed. And then try and convince your wife to have sex with you. Um, she says no. You get fucking pissed off at her. And then you fucking, maybe you go beat yourself off in the bathroom. Um, or maybe you then start a fight and then just go to bed pissed off. Or maybe you guilt trip her and then get your sex. And then you're going really fucking hard because you're so pissed off. About what? I don't know. Um, and, then, and then wake up tomorrow and do it all again. How's that for vision? <laughs> Damn, dude. I am pissing so many people off right now. This is supposed to be a mirror. Like what you see? No, you don't. So fix it. You stupid fuck. Sorry, I'm being so obnoxious. Um, this whole thing started... Oh, I feel better getting it out. I feel like I just fucked. Busted. Okay, so this whole thing started because... Um, I'm so sick of people fucking not having vision and then getting frustrated and bitching and being angry. And it's like you never even gave yourself a chance to have any sort of success or happiness because you didn't have vision. And I'm wondering why people don't have any vision. Maybe it's because the only thing that they see are their feeds. So it's like they don't have time for vision. It's like you got work on your feed and in your off time you come home Scrolling, going to bed, you're scrolling in bed. Where alarm clock wakes up, scrolling. It's like, what is it? What are you? What images are you filling your mind with? And how are those images helping you get to your own vision of your own future? Um, they're not. They're really not. 
What is your vision of your future? Start with your funeral and then work your way back. What kind of person do I want to be? If it's not a cheating fuck, then don't be a cheating fuck. Like, sorry, I'm saying that a lot because I keep seeing fucking dudes cheat, 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 cheat. I used, I used to cheat too, like full disclosure. And I, I, and I, I now that I'm a sensitive fuck now because I'm in the profession of entertainment and anything less is a complete failure. Like when I was in the Marine Corps, I was a, I was completely insensitive. I was a sociopath. No, 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 no emotion other than anger and fucking excitement. The thought of fucking wasting my enemies, the thought of hard training, the thought of fucking chicks, right? But no real concern for others' feelings. Uh, and that's what I needed to be. Um, uh, well, I, I didn't need to, I didn't need to not have concern for to cheat tricks, to chick, chicks like shit. I didn't have to do that. I regret that. And I hope to undo that damage by convincing other guys to not do that. But now that I'm out, my profession demands sensitivity. So now I think about this shit. And every time I see the shit that is like literally destroying people's fucking mindsets, like mine was destroyed when I was younger, that's probably why I became that way. Um, it's, it, it, it's like, it's because I'm seeing the same things. The guys are bitching about the same shit. About, yeah, fuck, fuck chicks and they're all stupid fucking lying hoes. Blah. Really? Do you think maybe you might have contributed to that problem by looking at women like they're all beneath you, like your whole life? Do you think maybe you might have contributed? Maybe. Think about it. Just think about it. Okay? Uh, but anyways, that, that stuff is really um, it's something that I'll, I'll speak more about. But anyways, back to vision. Um, develop a vision of your own life. And don't allow someone to fuck with your vision. Right? People can give input. Well, I think about this, think about this. You know, my mom... Oh, Daniel, I think you'd be a great lawyer. You'd be a great lawyer, honey. You're really good at arguing. You're really good at persuading people. Be a great lawyer. I don't know. I think you'd be really good. I think you'd be really good. Yeah, Ma, but my vision of my own future is not as a fucking lawyer. So stop saying it. Listen to my vision. Ask your son. Uh, am I uh, expressing some fucking mommy issues right now? <laughs> Listen to your son. I don't want to be a fucking lawyer. We've already gotten past this. We already had the conversation. It was great. So I recommend for all of you that have those issues with your parents too, which is like most people, have a conversation with them. And if they don't, if, if they don't come around, if they're not interested in, in seeing your vision, forget them. That's their fault, not yours. So anyways, um, have your vision and allow input, but don't change your vision for someone else. Change someone because you've taken in all the fucking input and feedback and you're like, actually, you know what? I like that better. That, that vision does sound good. That profession will be good for me. That profession will make me happy and fulfill me. And I could spend my time like this and, you know, like, fine. That input can, can help mold your own vision, but it doesn't, you don't change your vision for them. You don't, you don't meet someone who is like, uh, yeah, I'm, I can only take a job in this city. And then you leave your fucking job, your vision of your future for that. I don't, I don't agree with that. If you've got a great vision, you fucking make your vision happen. Develop the vision. I cannot fucking say it enough. Have vision because if you see it, you can make it happen. If you see it, you're great. I mean, Vet TV is living proof. You know what? Fucking hey, I just, I just realized this. Uh, you know, I have a desire to convince the world to believe in themselves more, to convince the world that they have the power to shape the world. Um, that TV is actually, every single thing we produce is proof that if you see it, you can make it happen. Because we see it, and then we put it on the fucking, the big screen for the world to see. Every production is living proof that if you can visualize something, you can make it a reality. Um, and as is my life which is why I'm putting more of it out there. I want it to be proof that if you visualize it, you see it, it can happen. Uh, so we'll end on that. Sorry about all the obnoxious rants. I have been feeling a lot of frustration lately, uh, mostly sexual. I haven't fucked in a very long time. Um, and I think that's really, I think that's is really what this whole thing was about. Uh, so I'm gonna go fuck my hand.
probably never watch this. Give it to Jessica to post it and never watch it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Please, in the comments, if you could, please, because uh, I want to get going. I want to get the comments going always. I want to create a sense of community in the comments. Please write down your own vision uh, of your funeral. What do you want people to say? Uh, who do you want there? What do you want them to think? We, I don't, don't just go with the, oh, what a crazy party. No, no. What do you want people to think of you when you die? What kind of man were you or woman were you? What will they say at your eulogy, the wake, your bedside? Envision the conversations that happen. It's a crazy thought. Use your imagination. What will the conversation with my wife be like? Or husband? Or my children? Or my best friend? What do I want to say to them? And what do I want them to say to me? See it. And write it in the comments. And that'll be a good fucking start for all you goddamn motivators out there. Whew. Oh, I feel better. I think I'm going to go dance around, uh, work out, and uh, fuck my hand. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>